<sighs> cool. Hey, Ernie. Vasco? You always let us do whatever we want. Isn't that bad for our healing process? Maybe, but I'd rather see you happy than sane. What about Chuck? What a moron. Yeah, but where is he? Far away, and I hope he doesn't come back, or this time he'll be cleaning the floor with his tongue. I'm going to take a little walk. Be good, if you can. Huh. <sighs> Rock! Huh. <sighs> cool. Let's try to locate where we're at. For now, I've figured out where the casino is, as well as the central fan in Kurgan's final resting place. And yes, I believe I can find my way to Bennett's office. Ready? Yes, let's get to it. Huh? Uh, what's this? goes on forever. Oh man, it stinks in here. Seems like a morgue. Well, this sanatorium has been around for more than a century, so I wouldn't be surprised if this room had originally been used as a morgue. An emergency room? Oh, who knows what else? There's a drain in the middle. Oh. That reminds me of an eminent psychiatrist who believed that the seed of evil was in our blood, so he would drain it out. They say he drained the blood from one guy 47 times, removing more than 10 pints, which probably killed him. There's a wooden spatula inside. All right. Spick and span. I hope they didn't use that to move the patients. Well, it looks like this doohickey here is slightly less disgusting than the others. I'd like to imagine it's a little vacuum, but I don't want to think about what it's vacuumed. The two parts are attached by an iron chain. rather not think about the types of therapies they use them for. In fact, it looks like they weren't even taken off of the last person who had them on. I believe it was used to turn the electric beds on and off. Oh, that's vile for God's sake. Oh. Yowza! That was so rusty it just fell apart. Great. Now how am I supposed to get out of here? What were they doing in there? Underwater childbirths? Wow, what a strange shape. I don't even want to imagine what it's for. It looks so new compared to the rest of the room. Maybe they brought it here to clean things up, but changed their mind in the end. It's not even dusty. Go figure. There's an iron bar inside. 
I've reached the conclusion that the iron bar that was inside the hole was stuck to the side so hard that it could not be removed by grabbing it with my bare hands. However, with the forceps, things might work just a little better. Amazing! It's as if I knew the solutions before I even know anything about the problems. The bar's a bit rusty, but I'll do it. Most likely it's the one that's missing in the space I entered through. Okay. Hey, it's already been unstuck. Again? If I did that handiwork, I would have... A trampoline! That's it! Now let's get out of here! One, two, three! Ugh. Oh, darn swimming pool. It almost ruined my entire plan. Go directly to office. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. Runny, it's Bennett. How's everything going? Me, I'm the same. My work isn't nearly as secretive as yours. I was just calling to say thank you. I got the package with the things I asked you for. Yes, it's all there. The photos, the keys, and the instructions to get to Chapman's cabin. Chapman? Why does that name ring a bell? Yes, I'll try to go this week. I owe you one, Ronnie. Bennett records his hypnotherapy sessions on it. According to him, he takes the recordings home afterwards and stores them away in his safe. Very comfy. It's almost better than a bed. Those are the Brewster sisters, Amy and Martha, two of Happy Dale's biggest benefactors back in the 50s. Bennett, that paragon of mental health, can't even work without his coffee. And after all, it is a drug. Inside are Kurgan's medical records. I have to dream up a plan for switching his medical records with mine. Those are his degrees in psychiatry. If I'm not mistaken, it turns on when it detects something inside and you close the door. And it turns off when you open the door. No trace of Kurgan's head left in there. If you get too close, it could slice and dice you. Where does it lead? Okay. Opening this with my bare hands is impossible. Yeah, that might just work. Yes, those 
those motors are really going to do the trick for me. I'm thinking that underneath the hatch, there's a set of motors which would disintegrate ahead if one just happened to fall onto them. Right before escaping, I'll open it with the iron bar and place Kurgan's body in it so that it looks like his head fell down the hole and was pulverized by the machines. That way, nobody gets suspicious about the missing head. And so, getting his head to disappear without arousing suspicion, done. to get his dead body to pass from my dead body and make sure that the people who find him never suspect any funny business just because the head's missing. Yeah, this knife blade is big enough to cut through a fingernail like that. Cutting his nail. Done. Yeah, the artist's pen will be perfect, but I'm not sure what my tattoo even looks like. That's the trouble when they put it on your butt. Good. Done. Swift plan, man. If I put it in for just one itsy bitsy instant and then I open the door right away, the candles will melt but without burning the wax up entirely. But wait, the not so nice part is that I'll get a nasty burn when I take it out. No, wait, I have a funnel. Performing hair removal on his shoulders. Done. As soon as you're done with this... The other day, while sitting right there, I won three million dollars from Kurgan. I got a feeling I won't be collecting that debt anytime soon. Some people use it to photocopy their butt. Wait! My tattoo! Hey! You peeping Tom! I'm about to drop my trousers here. It would be such a nice touch if we could just imagine... Um... A curtain, let's say. Great. Now I feel a bit more comfortable with this. Let's see how it works. Presto! Looks nicer than I thought. Okay, when I count to three, we can stop imagining the curtain. One, two, three. Marcelo's teachings do come in handy once in a while. I have the artist's pen, the photocopy for reference. In other words, I'm set. Copying my tattoo on his butt. Done.
And why not? Looks like a Martian invention. Hey, that might just work. Okay, but I'm walking on eggshells here. Because if he sees the tube, I'm doomed. That's strange. I really gotta stop drinking this stuff. Now! Man, that was close. Switching his medical chart with mine. Done. Cutting his nail. Done. Copying my tattoo on his butt. Done. Performing hair removal on his shoulders. Done. Getting his head to disappear without arousing suspicion. Done. Kurgan has now been fully Brianized. Finally. Anyone who sees him will be 100% sure that Jacob Kurgan's corpse is actually Brian Basco's. I still have to switch my clothes with his, but I'd better wait until I'm ready to escape. Now I just have to figure out how to slide down that cable on the roof. Okay, but after seeing what happened to Kurgan, I think I'll take ladder number one. Locked. Darn that Murphy's Law. Gabo's stick thin. So I bet he could slip between the bars. But me? No. Not even in an imaginary box. Well... Done. Excellent! If there's a way to bend those bars, that would be it. That's the cable Gabba was talking about, right? Looks like the other side of the cable is right by that huge sign welcoming people to Happydale. Ideal for my escape. That's it. When it's time to escape, I just put the forceps around the cable, hold on tight, jump, and slide down. Well, I think I've done everything I needed to do. That psycho Kurgan is so Brianized, they'll think his body is mine. And besides that, I know how to slide down the cable on the roof now. I'm gonna go back to my room to wait for the right time to escape. When the sun goes down, I'm free as a bird. Nothing's gonna stop me from escaping. Stop right there! Hold him down, Ernie. Your pleasant little stroll is over, Basco. Hey, Miss Palmer! Basco's all worked up. He needs the anesthesia. Get him back to bed. He clearly needs more medication.
crazy chick force-fed me some nasty meds. What did she give me? Ernie! Was this the pill? Sure is, Basco. That was the one. What are you doing in here, Ernie? House rules, Basco. If the nurse on call has to leave, it's my job to come on in. I'm surprised you haven't figured this stuff out yet. Wouldn't you like to take a peek inside Miss Palmer's purse? Take a peek? In her purse? No. Can you guess where, though? What are you writing? Rebuttals against dumb stuff people say about Elvis. Like what? One says Elvis was killed by an FBI gnome. That can't be true, because to get into the FBI, you have to be at least five foot three. <laughs> Keep writing, Ernie. Will do, Basco. I have to find out what the effects of neural shock gain are. I can't risk losing it when I'm escaping from this place. I think Quickle gave it that name. You know, that socialist trade union agitator. Okay, but just for 30 seconds, tops. <laughs> Hi there, I'm Mickey. Who are you? Brian. Brian Basco. Nice to meet you, Brian. So, what's up? You look nervous. Of course I do! In five minutes is the last episode of Barbara's Crest, and as soon as it's over, I have to rush my butt over to the university to take my Pharmacology 3 exam. It's like the most important day of my life on two totally different fronts. You'd be jittery too, Brian. Ready for your big exam? <laughs> I've memorized it all. Ask me whatever you want. What pharmacies in Southwest Manhattan will be open 24 hours next Wednesday? Time. <laughs> You're clueless. You gotta ask me about some drug, and I'll tell you everything I know about it. Neuroshockine XR. Neuroshocking XR, chemical composition, hypopendulic acid, dosage administered orally, used only to resuscitate the sick who are clinically, clinically, uh, clinically, uh, clinically, uh, dead. Dead. In any other type of patient, it causes acute neural excitation, which results in attacks of extreme violence in the patient, which... Uh... What? Miss Palmer gave me pills to make me ultra-violent? Yes, of course. That knife under my pillow was her doing. That's how she knew about my candy. And then she wouldn't give up until I took those pills. Is she trying to get me to kill someone? What for? Does she hate me that much? The important thing now is to find some sort of antidote. Which can only be neutralized by taking... Uh, by taking... A direct electrical shock. Uh, a direct electrical shock of high voltage applied to the back of the neck. In other words, either you jolt the guy with electricity or he starts to go postal and kill everyone in sight. Thanks a lot, Mickey. You just saved my life. Next question. Father of the famous Red Hook. And now our section on culture has come to an end. Gracias, and I welcome you. I've got it, Gabo. The solution to my escape and the whole mess with Kurgan. Okay, then you don't need me anymore. Well... Do you know of a medicine called Neuroshockine XR made in easy-to-swallow caplets? No. They've given me more drugs than you can find on the market, but I've never heard of that one. 
Did I finally tell you what Bennett did to me? Yes. Too bad for you. You're going to have to hear it again. When I came to, after being hypnotized, Bennett was already at his desk talking on the phone. Judge Whitley, I was just wanting to, uh... Oh, it's all settled now. Well, first thing tomorrow, I'll have the report to you. But in conclusion, he's lying. He's not mentally ill. He's completely cognizant of his acts. He belongs in a prison and should never be let out. Why do you have a room all to yourself? Connections. I guess somebody pays for me to be treated like a softie, and I ain't gonna complain about that. <laughs> I'm gonna keep planning my escape, Gabo. Good for you. Red Hook cereal. With have you rebutted any spectacularly stupid speculation about Elvis lately? Yeah. This one guy claims Elvis was working as a DEA agent in the war on drugs. But that's impossible, because everybody knows Elvis never had nothing to do with drugs. Can you lend me the taser inside of Miss Palmer's purse? Basco, I never took you for a thief. A nutcase and a murderer, yeah, but not a thief. Come on, dude. She's not going to notice. I'll give it back to you later. And I don't sell out for nothing. Well, maybe for cash. What are you doing in here, Ernie? House rules, Basco. If the nurse on call has to leave, it's my job to come on in. I'm surprised you haven't figured this stuff out yet. <laughs> Keep writing, Ernie. Will do, Basco. Man, after what he told me about all of the gold in the world. Ernie, do you think the casino chips Gabo gave me are fake? I doubt it. How much are we talking about here? $125,000. $125,000? I'd like some of them chips myself. Yeah? Well, go figure that they're not at all that appealing to me. I'd even give them up in exchange for... I don't know... a taser gun? Basco. Never, ever, ever will you get me to take that taser out of Miss Palmer's purse. And you know that never means... How cool. Be careful, Gabo. One shock and that's it. Sure. Vasco? <laughs> 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 minutes till the changing of the guard. Get going! Miss Palmer could- Give me your cell phone. Why? If it goes as planned, they'll contact Gina to have her identify Kurgan's headless cadaver. I've got to warn her. She has to tell them the body's mine. Hey, who's there? <gasps> oh my gosh, that basketball fell is dead! Up there! It's Kurgan! Kurgan! Stop right there! <laughs> At last, Bennett's apartment building. Shouldn't be too hard to find a fire escape to get up there. I'll go up to his penthouse, steal the recordings of my therapy sessions, and find out what happened on Mala Island once and for all. Okay, now! Darn it. I can't take the luxury of going into the street again, or someone might recognize me. So I better just do what I came here for. 
Bad news. There's no sign of a fire escape. I'll have to find some other way into the building. <laughs>